You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Carlos and Gabriel from the band Immortal Guardian. You guys, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me and welcome to The Pit. Thanks, man. What's up, dude? What's up? <laughs> so with the world turned upside down, how have you guys been? Did you guys actually manage to... I know you're workaholics, so did you actually take time to enjoy your holidays? What holidays? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, look looking at 2020, every every uh, what every birthday holiday, we pretty much spend it all in the same room, the same studio room, you know. So, yeah, we we made this record just pretty much being in lockdown at home. The moment all the tours and everything got canceled, we, you know, we're like, what are we gonna do? Do what we know how to do best, and we pretty much uh, started writing a record about the pandemic as it was unfolding. Yeah, man, and we kept going, man. We haven't stopped yet, you know. Been shooting uh, videos, and we have a, a few collabs that we're doing with some friends, and that's how pretty much we're spending the whole entire time. Like, uh, holidays wasn't any different. <laughs> so I need to kind of get more into the origins of the band before we go any forward. Uh, Gabriel, you're one of the original members of the band. So do you remember when Immortal Guardian was just a concept, a twinkle in your eye? Was there kind of a a, a concept that surrounded it or like a, a philosophy towards the band? Not at all. We were just a bunch of kids that wanted to rock and roll, you know? We just like, you know, and even now, you know, like we we just like sometimes uh it's it's a lot more simpler than you know it's not so deep you know sometimes we're just we're four dudes that just want to rock and roll you know we're just making heavy metal music and we don't get all political or religious or nothing just because we're all so different we're all from different countries and different places so at the end of the day it's, it's almost been the same vibe you know everyone that's coming to the band it's like are you down to rock and roll with us all right cool you know and uh, yeah, I guess the general theme's been the same. Now, did it? Did I expect it to become what it has today? Not at all. You know, it was literally like in those days. It was like this is my high school band. You know, and then later I'll do something else. And then I didn't know that something else would just keep being that. <laughs> <laughs> The lyrics have a lot to say, and the uh, last couple of albums, a lot of your songs have been pretty, uh, let's say, uh, intelligent. I'll just, for lack of a better word, you actually take time to think about what you're going to say, and I'm sure that was the case with the record that you were just recording, but for whatever reason, when this, when this, the world got turned upside down, the pandemic happened, you felt like what you, you had recorded just didn't match the time, so you decided to put that in your pocket? Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And and at the at the time it wasn't like so much of like a oh this is horrible, let's scrap it. It was just kinda like we started writing other songs and then those songs were like, Well, this makes more sense to put out instead because these songs are about the pandemic. The other songs are more timeless, you know, if that makes yeah. sense. So it's not that the, the other songs were bad or that they, they weren't like they were completely out of touch. It was just kinda like if we're writing songs about, you know, this pandemic and everything going on, doesn't it make sense that we, you know, put just this release now? Release yeah. this first, yeah. So and yeah, but we we all we are also very uh, thoughtful on the, you know, on the message, uh, based yeah. based on our, you know, our influence, uh, you know, as musicians as well. I mean, I've, we we all have heard our whole entire lives, you know, this music that pulled us from rock bottom and and faced the the world out there as big. You know, being a, a a new chance given to us, you know, to to redo everything and restart, or even to you know to to you know celebrate the victory and glorious moments, and at the same time, so we're we're constantly trying to make people think about those aspects. And mm -hmm. when uh, we were writing the, this new album, we we felt like it would be more uh, a lot more important for us to be more relevant to the time. And to help people out to, you know, to think about a certain aspect of things that they haven't thought before. And it's basically what we kind of try to embrace when we're, we're writing the, the lyrical content. Yeah, it seems so. like you guys aren't really trying to tell people what to think so much as you're just telling them what you've observed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But there's a hopeful message beneath all of it. I don't, or maybe that's just comes across from the music or something like that. But it seems like there's a 
glass half full kind of uh, uh, optimistic side to all this. Absolutely. Exactly, yeah. Because that's what we got to do, man. Like even doing all this crazy stuff, like that's that's really all you can do is just stay positive and hope for a better tomorrow because it's almost like the, wor- the worst things you think of, the, the more it happens, you know? Yeah. It's psychosomatic. That's right. Yeah. Right? Exactly. <laughs> it's kind of, and I mean, the, the whole basis of why we call the album Psychosomatic is, you know, Zima and I, we lived together here in Vegas. So we were kind of like experienced. Well, we used to. He just recently moved out, but we, we were uh, in the studio together experiencing the whole pandemic, like as it was unfolding. And we were just like, we would talk every day about like, man, how many of our friends have called us to tell us that they felt sick? but they get tested and they ended up not being sick. And it's almost like, and it's not to take anything away from the actual virus. It's just, it's a very real and serious thing, but I felt like there was as many or probably more people that were just spook themselves out. Just like, you're just that scared that you like, you think you have something or, or maybe you just get this new anxiety and crazy fear. And you've never had before. And uh, we thought that was like, so worthy of writing. Like, man, this is never one other time in history. Maybe world wars or something, but no one was yeah. around for that stuff. Did, did the whole world feel something like this? You know, we're like in this panic where you start feeling symptoms and you don't know why, and then yeah, and then no, never mind, it went away. Wait, I do have. Wait, I don't have it. And yeah, oh, we, it's such a crazy thing. We had, yeah, yeah. <laughs> during, during the the whole when the the whole pandemic was, you know, uh, spread now, and the, this thing just started to be more and more aggravated. We had some friends that. They just wanted to be isolated and come, you know, they, they stayed with us and, and, uh, we, we watched everybody's reaction on it, man. And, uh, we, we, that wasn't any different from, from ours, you know? Yeah. And, uh, watching the whole thing unfold like that, it just created all these fears and all these things that generated this, uh, physical symptoms on, on, on people. And, and, uh, there was just like this, uh, huge catastrophe from outside in, you know? And, uh, that was, that's pretty much where the concept of the album came out to be, you know. And it's it's I think it's so healthy to just talk about it. I mean, it must have been a little daunting to first approach the subject as everyone it seems like if you say anything slightly opinionated nowadays, everyone's going to lump you, oh, you're in that crowd and you're crazy. I don't want to talk to you anymore. But yeah. we need to talk about these things at the end of the day or else are we going to deal with them mentally? So exactly. the music is just another way of going through that. Did it help you guys to to work on this while it was happening? Was it like a, a mental release for you? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I open in and, and just by letting it out through the music, you know, that was just the best way we could have to, to express it, you know? Yeah, if I, didn't, if I didn't have something to do during all that time, I would have gone crazy. Like, literally just, you know, it's like one thing for every artist in the world to have their, like, tours and all the things slash them. And another thing is just to, like, not be able to see your, your bandmates or friends or anything. So making this record over the internet was pretty crazy, you know, just sending hundreds and hundreds of little you know, messenger and Instagram videos to each other, going through every little detail of every corner of the song. And eventually we got what you hear. It's pretty insane. You know, like we haven't seen Justin and Josh. Uh, well, I saw Josh uh, during the summer when we were doing the mix downs and stuff, but Justin, we haven't played or seen him in person since Nam. We did performances then. So yeah, we got this new video coming out this month. Uh, it's coming out uh, later this this month of January. That's uh, pretty much our 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 throwback to Nam. You know, it's just like we had a really great Nam, and it's such a shame that uh, it's not going to come back in a lot of festivals. So it's kind of it's a song called Clocks, and it kind of just takes the clock back a year and sh- shows us uh, the world we're in and the world to look forward to. Well, I, I keep looking back to your uh, video of the shred sled that you guys had. Yeah, there's some fun times, man. <laughs> well. I don't see why you couldn't have a shred sled behind uh, being pulled behind something slowly and everyone could self distance and you, you could do a little like drive by show. That's a great <laughs> idea, dude. Tr- yeah. Trust me, uh, ideas are being thrown around. It's just more of a, I guess, a legality. I guess, the go- you know, yeah. we're kind of all at the mercy of our governments, you know, yeah. w- when things are safe again. But uh, 
Dr- yep. like, we thought that was like the first thing that came to mind. Like, dude, yeah. we just like drive by neighborhoods and bring metal to the masses. <laughs> yeah, let's let's drive the shreds led to the the Fremont Street, you know, over here in Vegas and, and things like that. But it goes a little beyond, you know, yeah. the I guess the the thing because it, it it also like just like you were saying a little bit earlier about the the you know people's idea about the whole thing like it really varies you know like some people can condemn that we can go to jail for that or we can get our things confiscated no. <laughs> like, yeah, like we did on the first red sled yeah so. when we were younger we didn't care like fine <laughs> what's that and we just got so fortunate that it, that it was never got really bad you know like we, it was a lot of a lot of minor kind of things but yeah we, you know, we, we made we a ran statement. away from the cops a few times. Yeah, we made a statement <laughs> and we did our thing, and then eventually, you know, we started doing it legally at the festivals and stuff, which was cool. But now that the band lives in different places, it's also made it super tough. And, and we wanted to, we just wanted to fly our drummer and and, and a bassist in just so that we could do the some videos and some and some stuff like the shred sled and stuff. But we can't even like get flights from Canada to here and. I mean, yeah. they they over there have lockdowns, curfews from eight to, to eight to something. I don't know. Yeah. I was watching videos. It looks like a freaking scene from the purge. Just like these war sirens. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. Crazy times, man. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, when you guys were approaching this album and trying to write the music, did you have kind of a slow start, or was it just suddenly like boom, a million ideas? Let's go. Oh man, we were so eager to yeah. just, we we're about to hit the road hard with the, you know, the, the two new members. And we had so much energy and so much like, yeah. you know, so much power in uh, within us, man. And uh, we, we were also like, we just started jamming together and there was this huge, like insane chemistry between us. And by the time that we started writing the album, we just took like a month for us to write the whole entire album. It was just like the ideas just yeah. popping out, of every, you know, at, yeah. all over the place. We had we had so much within that we we couldn't express during th- that time because everything was canceled. So I guess that kind of like pumped us in like having a response to all that, you know? Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, like yeah. You know, the the it was a big boom, like you said. It was just ideas were flowing left and right only because yeah we we're all just on this emotional roller coaster of fear and happiness and <laughs> everything yeah. at the same time so you look at it i think it was like a month of writing a month of fine tuning a month of tracking and then the month of like mixing and mastering so it was like probably like a four month five month process pretty much spent the whole summer going into fall doing it yeah and I know you got more music videos planned for some of your songs here, but what about an uh, online concert? Have you guys discussed this at all? Well, in the beginning of the pandemic, we were doing uh, you know, yeah. live performances on, on Facebook Live and Instagram Live and whatnot. And uh, it, it, was, it, was, you know, it was great. But uh, it's for us to, uh, to keep that, that kind of consistency, having everybody on different time zones, you know, and, and oh, yeah. relying on the internet, uh, bandwidth and things like that. It just, it makes it a little harder for us, yeah. you know, but we're mainly focusing you know. on like video content now, just making like really creative, cool videos. And, and because, you know, we're all so far apart, we're like, okay, let's make a newspaper video and let's make a, a zoom style video and pretty much things that we can shoot being thousands of miles apart. And, Everybody in the band has like some kind of camera or phone or something. So we're kind of just improvising with the, with the pandemic times, you know, being, being super socially distant. I, I see that you've been pretty active on the YouTube channel. You've been making covers and stuff. I, I, I got to say that cover that you guys did of the House of the Rising Sun. That's the best metal cover of that song I've heard. Period. Yeah, that's, 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 that, sure. that, that was really creative. Uh, you took it a lot of new new dimensions into that song. But uh, everything else that you guys throw on there is this something you love to do just to keep yourselves active and stuff? Like, like the hilarious videos too. Like, what is this a microphone capo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, we just we just laugh at ourselves all day here, man. We just keep like joking at each other. And- and pranking and you know until it becomes something that's in the camera <laughs> yeah no, it's honestly 
That actually is really funny. Like uh, we have a lot of fun making these. Um, we have a lot of fun making these. Like uh, you know memes like to me it definitely brings lots of joy and this weird like therapy because i know it makes me laugh it makes it makes all our followers laugh and during these times i think we all need to laugh <laughs> yeah man it's just something to get us away from what all this you know this bad stuff going on so yeah. it's a it's a good deal it's a, it's a good way to get out of this uh negative bubble i guess Absolutely. Because in my mind, at the end of the day, you guys are a live band. It's kind of how, where you belong, where you thrive. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> what was your first concert that you guys went to? What was your... Well, my first show, it's kind of all like a blur. I, I remember I saw like Static X when I was like 10, but it was kind of like whatever. But the first concert, I remember like, remember, remember when I was 12 years old, I went and saw Iron Maiden and the opener was Motorhead and Dio. Oh, wow. from that like from that moment on i remember i saw that concert thinking like oh this is what all concerts are like and there's no <laughs> concerts ever come back to that the bar it like, high, it, man. yeah it's like those memes are like make your dream concert and that was literally the dream concert and that but that was really the v show in childhood that, that inspired me like dude i, I want to do that <laughs> yeah dude. what was yours that's well my my first concert uh I had a, you know, my neighborhood, the kids were a little, a few years older than me. I was the youngest in the, in a, in a, that, that gang. And, uh, I went to a local show with a band called, uh, Mandatory Suicide. And, uh, when I was, I think, 11. And, uh, that's when it all started, man. Uh, I just started, I just saw that going and I was like, dude, this is the best thing I could ever expect. So, <laughs> And uh, but the 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 big the first big show I went to was uh, in Philips Monster of Rock over in, in Brazil with uh, there was uh, Slayer um, there was uh, Priest uh, they had uh, a few other bands but there was like this huge festival and and that was just you know life changing to me. Then Rock and Rio, and they were the, that. Those were the first concerts I went as, like you know, I don't know, man. I, it just blew my mind, and that was like I was certain that I, that's what I wanted to do in my life, you know. Did I imagine that. Rock and Rio as a teenager must be insane? Insane. <laughs> <laughs> it must be so to take in four hundred fifty thousand people. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Wow. I uh, I don't think I have anything to even compare to that. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first one? My the very first one I went to, you're gonna laugh. It was Paul Brandt. <laughs> wow, that's cool though. I, I was seven. I went with my family, but uh, no, I went. To, I saw Iron Maiden though uh, back in 2010, and they were doing the Final Frontier tour and yeah, just I saw running across the stage. Too. Wow, just so, blow my mind. Yeah, I got your hang with them backstage in that tour. Wow, really? Yeah, that was great. My brother sold a bunch of plasma. He sold his own plasma to get tickets for it. <laughs> Just and the story was so ridiculous. The the local station like ran a story about it and they made a video about it. And and uh, our manager made this crazy you know documentary. I sold my blood for rock and roll. And, and made it was him, made, yeah, made him sold yeah. made him send him some vinyls and stuff. And I don't know. It was just so. I remember that that concert like very special memory. The Final Frontier. And I remember I bought the. I bought the shirt, not realizing that the guys outside the venue selling shirts don't work for Iron Maiden. Yeah. You know, like, oh, no. <laughs> I didn't know that there were skeletons. I was like, that's so convenient. They got like merch guys in the parking lot. I was like, dude, no. Yeah, not been to like big concerts, you know. I'd always gone to like smaller shows, like these like arena size shows. It's like, oh, you know, you got to pay like, you know, 10, 20 bucks to park kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah man that's awesome man <laughs> so uh what's on the horizon right now for you guys i know that the album is still coming out you got to pump all that you got to release the videos and keep that pumping but uh what's on the horizon for you right now what are you focused on what are you thinking about right yeah. now just um keeping on truck and like uh we're really going to be he heavy uh 
based on like videos, we're going to go hard on the videos until touring comes back. Like, you know, the, the moment the governments give us the green light, you can expect us on the road and kind of rescheduling what we had. But uh, until then, we're going to be making a ton of uh, a ton more videos than you're used to seeing us make. So it's kind of a good thing that we're home. Yeah, man. We're going to be producing really hard. Uh, we have lots of music to put out, so uh, mm -hmm. it's it's we we have enough enough material to work with right yeah, now. Yeah, sure. we're gonna be just swimming on rivers of <laughs> of material, man. Yeah, it must be kind of exciting to know that you have an album in your pocket. Is that something you feel like you still need to hold on to for a while right now, and maybe focus on other things, and even put out? Maybe you'll release your second and third album before you actually release your actual second album or <laughs> yeah. yeah we don't know yeah, we're, we're, we're excited about that too we're just yeah. just knowing that like we're we're actually ahead once as a band you know like whoa like we have more than enough music that we can actually just focus on what we've always wanted to do is the video you know like it's so hard to do cool music videos and stuff when you're touring or you're like busy doing other stuff but um now that we're home it's like we can focus and we can probably write another album. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll call it 2021. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the loose, that's the loose name for now. Yeah. It's pretty scary to, to think of what 2021 is going to bring after a 2020 like that. What advice would you give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Never give up on your dreams, man. Um, yeah. To that's get so, to give you my yeah. best piece of my latest piece of advice that's been helping me is like, you know, when you're working on your dream, whatever it may be, don't overthink it and just do it. You know, yeah. Like you'd be scared to put out that first thing or do that thing, and you just just think and think and think. Just do it, and that's how you'll achieve the dream. Yeah, because yeah. hard work is all, always pays off, man. Because yeah. you can spend years thinking and planning, but. There's no better thing that will achieve dreams than actual action. Even if the action is not the best or whatever, you're still moving forward. It's better than just yeah. just thinking and hoping about it. You know what I mean? And working on a dream is never work, you know? So if, if your dream becomes your dream work one day, you, you know, you have everything to end. But if you're working on a dream, you really have nothing to lose. Yeah, exactly. It seems like the word that really sums this the whole interview up is psychosomatic. You guys really nailed it on the head when you found that word. Thanks. Yeah, yeah man. It was, we definitely, it. uh, it's all about the mind. You got to weed the garden every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. man. Definitely. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners? Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, you know, we hope you like our new album. You can check us out. Uh, hopefully, we'll be on the road soon to see you guys in person when things are safe. And uh, until then, please be be safe and keep it metal. Keep it rocking. <laughs> Everyone, you've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been talking with Gabriel and Carlos from the band Immortal Guardian. Their new album, Psychosomatic, comes out February 12th. And that's my puppy whining in the background, which means i got to wrap this up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks for having us, Peach City Radio. Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you so much, Carlos and Gabriel. Take care of yourselves, and hopefully we'll talk again in the future. All right, Thanks, brother. Man. Take care, man. Take Keep care. rocking.